as I've been making this film for five years, you know, more and more friends and people I know are aware of what I'm doing. And every time they see an article, I'd get a ping an email. You know, Rob, it's, it's like, oh, Rob, you know, every time that came up. But it started coming up more and more. You know, all these studies around anxiety, around depression. And I think it's people are talking about a, um, an epidemic of depression and anxiety. You know, uh, we in the modern West, are, as a society, as a culture, are incredibly unhappy and incredibly lost. And one answer has been to just stuff more medication down people's throats. And not to say medication can't be useful in, in, at times, but it's kind of, I think that's reached a critical mass where even people who have tried that are saying, mm -hmm. well, that's not helping. And it's, again, it's contact. It's, people are so alienated and cut off from themselves, from their neighbours, from their communities, um, from, from meaningful work from having a say in that meaningful work, from a real participation in a meaningful political process. You know, all of these things, it's like, of course, the, the, the human response is to feel anxious and depressed. You know, that's called being alive and being human. And what your anxiety and what your depression are telling you is something ain't right here. Something's not right. <laughs> They're kind of screaming at you because <laughs> you're doing your best to ignore it. Um, so I think, I think all of this research, this scientific research, is really important, and it 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 speaks to that you know to that left side of our brain that perhaps, especially in this Western societies, need and want that rational. Okay, this is a rational argument. Someone in a white coat's done a study. Okay, look again. But I think alongside that, I think I like to think, yeah, art like this film and all the other stuff that's around at the moment plays an important part too because, um, you know, as a filmmaker, what I learned is you can throw all the facts and figures you want at the people, but actually what really persuades people is, is kind of a, an emo to be taken on an emotional journey. And I think what reading those three stories and sharing them, you know, turning them into animations and sharing them with people is you are taken on an emotional journey with Leary and his daughter, with Huxley and the flowers, um, with Watts and his trip back into his own conception and back, and, and then with the guy at the gas station. Right, 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 right. Um, so with, with that being said, I mean, going back to your point of like the white lab coats, I mean, I'll have to say that that's been one of the biggest things in America, at least, from our kind of like, we need proof, you know, kind of things. And I mean, one of the first instances that I saw this in like a mainstream was PTSD with soldiers. I mean. America is about their soldiers and you know people like that and going to war and um, America and nationalism etc cetera, etc cetera, and American exceptionalism in a way but then when you have something that can help people that need to be helped and other things aren't working and you have a, these people in white lab coats telling you this will help it, it really changed the tide or at least in my perception of five years or so I mean that, that that's a huge deal but then at the same time that storytelling aspect is, is is very key. So I mean, the fact that you kind of finagled your way around this kind of minefield of like, okay, we'll get tell a good story, but then also back it up with facts. I mean, that's 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 got to be a huge undertaking, though. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was. So what has the response been though? So it's been out for a couple weeks now. Yeah, we we sort of just passed three weeks. And it's yeah, it's the response has been great. It, it's out, outstripped my expectations, and hopefully we're just getting started. You know, we're just hopefully as word begins to spread, um, we're just going to get bigger and bigger. And I'm I'm getting emails from people all over the world. You know, uh, Ecuador, Slovakia, LA, parts of the UK, um, parts of Europe. Australia, New Zealand, people saying, hey, I want to organize a local screening, you know, and, with a, and we want to have a discussion afterwards, and, you know, how do, how do I do that? And that's just brilliant. I'm so happy, and I'm hoping, I just want more and more people to do that. Um, you know, we need, we are, it's, it's, um, it's an independent project, it's an independent film, and it's, it's a, we need that grassroots engagement from people. So, if you, you know, 
to your listeners if you see the film and you enjoy it get involved you know hire out the local uh, community center hire out your local cinema you know get your relatives down and um, you know pass a hat round get some get some bucks in it and you know enjoy the film so going back because I think you just brought up an interesting point that it exceeds your expectations so let's go back to five years ago when you first emerged what what was this gonna be was this gonna be like a little you know, short film that you put on YouTube? Or, I mean, obviously you probably had aspirations of some sort, but like, mm. what were those initial things that, of, of expectations? Because if you've exceeded them, I mean, all, they, it, it's, it's, a, it's a legit film, a legit documentary film that's out and around the world and everyone's watching it. Like you just said, someone in Ecuador and Slovakia and New Zealand have it. So how, how were, were those expectations to start? And then obviously how it's changed um, in three weeks since it's been released? I've, from the very beginning, I've had the f feeling that this film has been coming through me. Mm. That, you know, I've just been the guy who's dealt with the details. You know, the feeling I've had is this film needed to be made and somehow I got handed the mantle. The and muse took you over. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't always been an easy mantle, you know. It, it, it hasn't been a smooth five years, but it's, I've, I've never lost that sense that, that of being a small part of something much bigger. And I think that's why it's resonating with so many people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it is of the now, it is of the time. And it's, there was something about, someone said to me recently that Michael Pollan, mm -hmm. who's, Changed, you know, who's, who's, Change your mind, he's, author. He, yeah, he's, he's, you know, it was great when he appeared, because I've been, I've been doing this five years and different people have popped up during that five years. And I mm -hmm. think his contribution was important. And I think he bridged, that world of New York Times best-selling author, science author, you know, and, and some of the, you know, I remember seeing him saying, what psychedelics have taught me is that some of these defenses I've developed over a lifetime, I don't need them anymore. He said that was the learning, and I think that hit the mm. nail on the head for psychedelics. But another thing, apparently, he said, I, I haven't heard firsthand, was that we never integrated the 60s. Fully, that this this thing that arose and people didn't know how to deal with it and it you know, push it down, repress it. His he, apparently he said, um, yeah, we never integrated this uprising of energies and ideas and everything else that came with the psychedelic movement in the 60s. And I think somehow maybe the film is a part of that, of integrating a part of our history into this current Renaissance because it's. I think, and I think that's important, that it isn't just a film about now, that it's a film drawing on 60 years ago and looking forwards to now. Yeah, and I mean, e even again, like you said, the pushing down of 50 to 60 years, and I mean, it's almost like it speaks to the, um, not just importance of this, uh, say, psychedelics, but again, the broader conscious, uh, broader uh, thing of trying to figure out consciousness in some way that, you know, it was gonna come back up inevitably anyway, you know? It, um, but so my, my, I guess my last film question, if you will, is you mentioned that maybe a sequel, maybe not, but like, are you, have you, are you just focused on, you know, the screenings and such? Have you already started going to the, the drawing board because now you're, you're jazzed up again? Or like, what, what is kind of the future for this, or at least for you in the film? Yeah, thank you. Um, I think a little break is probably healthy for me right now <laughs> before I leap back to the drawing sure. board. Um, and yeah, and yeah, also just being around to nurture and nudge um, and make sure that I do everything I can within my power to help the film on its next journey. But it, it's also felt a bit like a child leaving home. Mm. Yeah, I remember the night, the night before launch. It was like saying goodbye to, to a kid. You know, it's like it's 18 now, it's off to college. I've done my bit for you, you know, it was like, you're going to go out there and you're going to meet people and be screened places. I'm never going to go, people I'm never going to meet. And, you know, good luck to you. Off, you know, fly well, that's, <laughs> was the feeling I had. That's so interesting because, I mean, even after, you know, after I publish something, you know, you get that little rush of excitement, but then at the same time, it is that finitude of, well, it's done now. You know, there's nothing. We can't go back to those like growing pains or when I was editing and those kind of things. 
Oh, that's interesting. So, okay, so last last question, and what, this is about the on, the the, per, the only real personal question. Mm -hmm. But now I'm going to ask basically what you asked the interviewing experts is, you know, what have you learned about yourself and the world and your place in it after making this film? I think one of the, one of the biggest things I've taken from this whole process, this whole journey, has been that there's a lot more to myself and there's a lot more to the world than I had thought. That there's a lot more going on in both than I was aware of and that I was in, perhaps encouraged to be aware of growing up. And in terms of my place in it, I think uh, my place in it has gotten a lot smaller. Mm. I think that's our challenge. I think, I think we live in a very narcissistic culture, um, which is all about power and status and puffing oneself up and, you know, um, like a Huxley saw with the, with the automobiles. Um, I think we live in very narcissistic times and I think uh, healing a uh, medicine and antidote to that is uh, a d deflate kind of gently deflating that balloon mm. um, and placing ourselves back in a much smaller part of a much bigger process as a species you know sort of um, sort of giving more respect recognition or to the natural the natural order, the natural world that, that created us and that we quite arrogantly are kind of using, abusing and destroying at the moment. Sure. Sure. So I think those have all been lessons for me and I think those are all lessons that the film and, and this whole world can offer, hopefully offer other people too. It's, it's quite a painful journey but I think it's an important one that we all need to take.